stay six feet away from me. Go wash your hands. Leave me alone. I gotta shoot a video. How you doing guys? God. Brain Smasher here from the Pandemic Zone. Hope you are being smart, socially distancing, and washing your hands. This is fucked up. That's the last time I'm gonna talk about it. Um, we're getting back into the vaults with the letter G, mid G's. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I had to listen to a lot of this stuff to kind of freshen my memory on some of it. Uh, yeah. So, as usual, what we're gonna be listening to in the background, kinda, kinda digging this. Um, it's been a really long time since I listened to this, but this is Odin, the North Brigade. This is one of those kind of cheesy, understated, second-rate Napalm Records releases that came back, came out back in 96, 97. Could even be up there in the 98 zone or so. This is NPR 054, if you're keeping track. Um, really interesting solo project from one of the members of In Battle. Uh, it's just kind of blasting war metal but it's got a real weird sense of melody to it um it's a little too unrelenting to like listen to the record in the whole in one sitting um so i'm making you endure that um but it's cool uh it's going on back there so where are we at here we're looking to start off with uh yeah okay so, this is a formerly local band. Oh, this is gonna be embarrassing. These were friends of mine, still are. Um, it's a sealed copy. This band is called Genital Hercules. That's one of the most brilliant band names I may have ever heard. This is sealed because I think I gave away my unsealed copy of this to uh, a friend of mine. I did listen to it a lot back in the day. In fact, I sang in a band with a lot of members of this band, whatever. Um, General Hercules, so the name is kind of like the best part of it. Um, the guitar player's dad came up with that name. He was just like, you know what would be a good band name? General Hercules. And his son just turned around and started this band. Like, And it's really, really fun. It's, uh, it's kind of like, math rock, nerd rock kind of stuff. Um, they're just kind of fans of all different kinds of eclectic genres and they're kind of bringing that all together here. Um, so this came out in 2003. There's 12 tracks on this and it's really catchy, it's memorable. Um, I, I feel like this is not the audience that uh, this is gonna be really working for, but this is called A Trouser Full of Wantonness and uh, yeah, there you go. It might be on Bandcamp. I'm not sure. I want to say that might be a CDR. But they wound up moving to Chicago and changing lineups a little bit. And their singer in Chicago um, was an opera singer. And they did... Wait a minute. No, this... Yeah, I'm kind of confusing this, them with another band anyways. This is their second record, Spring Break 86. Um... And it's quite a departure from this original one. I went to a lot of shows and played a lot of shows with them around this era. Uh, and that was a, a real great time in my life. But this is when they moved to Chicago and I kind of lost touch with them. Uh, but that's Genital Hercules. Um, I don't feel like I'm going to make any new Genital Hercules fans today. But for the record, we're going through every single record in my collection. And I'm going to give you my um, short review of what we got. I fucked these all out of order, so I'm kind of trying to put them back in order as I talk about them. Here we have General Surgery with Necrology. I didn't know it until today, but this was originally released in 1991, and this version, Relapse, reissued, I'm going to say 93, yeah, that's right, back when they put years on the back of their albums. Um, this is just a quick little EP of a band who 
They're kind of confusing. Um, they never even recorded a full length until 2004. So, but they started out in 91. So, fucking weird. But it's notable because, A, they're a super great, like, carcass tribute kind of band. Um, but they're composed of members of Dismember, Afflicted, and another one I am forgetting, like, really notable Swedish band. Um, but this is good stuff. It's, like, it's definitely hard to define it by anything other than total carcass worship. Uh, first two albums only. By the time this came out, Necroticism was coming out, and, like, I feel like that's a real departure from the era of Carcass that they're maybe most known for, or, you know, tributized, at least by general surgery anyways. It's fun. It's uh, just a quick little 15-minute listen. I picked this up in a used bin probably 15, 20 years ago or so, and I put it on every now and then. It's fun. Um, I'm not really familiar with anything else in their discography, so I don't know if I'm missing out. Um, grindcore was definitely um, a period in my life, but it's not like I go through listening to Grindcore really ever anymore. Um, not that I dislike it, it just, I, you know, it, it had so much more to do with my angry early 20s than it does with me now. Um, so next we've got uh, May the Curse Bind. This is a band called Gast, G-H-A-S-T, uh, and this is a UK Black Doom kind of band, um, and this is kind of one of those bands that's like, if you know, you know, they're kind of good. Um, they did a follow-up to this, and uh, by the way, this came out, I think, in 2004, uh, and they followed it up about four years later, I believe, um, with an album that I haven't heard. And this is really promising, so it's kind of a dumb move on my part to have never followed through to check in on them. They showed a lot of potential with this, but there are a couple, a couple of caveats to it. Um, the production on it is a little weird for me. The mix, a eh, little, little not so great, but it's excusable for how like promising and good everything else about it is. Um, the drumming can be a little kind of clumsy, uh, and if there were maybe just like a little tastier kind of licks on here and not so clumsily written of percussion, I think this would be like a real standout kind of notable album. Um, but they're a UK Black Doom band and they're really able to kind of seamlessly um, meld in influences and kind of traverse a lot of different territory pretty well. Um, at times... Like, not being a fan of I Hate God, not that I dislike I Hate God, I just never really listen to them that often, but there are some parts that really remind me of a darker, um, more kind of sludgy New Orleans kind of style uh, of doom metal band, but there's like a blackened kind of vocal over the top of all of it. Um, but really, really talented, guys. It's a pretty interesting listen, and I, I know a couple friends are just like, they swear by this album um but you don't hear a lot of people really singing its praises anyways but it's good for what it is uh it came out on Toda's. this is a record Toda's tribe records this label is it's just really hard to pronounce so um next we got gigantic brain with the invasion discography this came out on razorback records back in yeah, really hard for me to pull this one out uh 2004 so um this is the discography of gigantic brain who i guess was just like a short-lived kind of cyber grind project i'm not sure who was behind this or if that's even worth noting at the time this was really really good and it satisfied the need um there was like a short period of time where Grindcore got kind of out of hand because everybody with a computer thought that they could kind of pull it off in a in a funny way. Like if you had, you know, funny, stupid lyrics and song titles, as long as you were like noisy and short and had blast beats, you could fucking do anything. Um, and that kind of, that illustrates the style that this is going for. 
Um, but this has a really, really interesting use of samples, and it is kind of riffy in some ways. Um, but again, not the kind of thing I'm reaching for fucking ever. And I've actually been meaning to go back and listen to this um, for a number of years. Never really got around to it. Um, and I put it on today, and I was kind of like, nah, you know, I'm not feeling this dumb today. But it was fun for what it is. I think this goes for a pretty penny on uh, eBay, discounts, whatever. Um, some of those Razorback early releases are really killer and kind of worth tracking down, and it's kind of sad that they don't like remain in print, but I'm not sure if anyone's fucking emailing those folks saying, hey, I need you to repress fucking Gigantic Brain all that often. Um, so next is a little EP here from a band called Giants. Um, also not metal, but this is like an inter interesting, but instrumental is what I was going for. Um, Post-rock kind of band. Definitely in the realm of fucking explosions in the sky and all that kind of shit. Um, not stuff I listen to very often, but uh, I saw these guys live and they went on to do uh, a couple of different full lengths and they were really good live. Um, I was really impressed with this. I wound up buying two copies of this from them and giving one to a friend because it was super, super good. Um, this is probably so old that it doesn't even play anymore being that it's a CDR, but uh, I do remember a couple of their follow-up full links being kind of worth listening to from time to time. Uh, next, we've got a quick little EP from a band called Gloria Diaboli, Gate to Sheol. Um, kind of a long form EP. I think it's around like 25, 30 minutes, so not nothing. Came out on uh, Battle Command Records um, back in 2007, but I want to say this was originally released on another label and this was a reissue, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, Gloria Diaboli were a short-lived Canadian black metal band, but there's a lot of it's really vicious. It's really dark and well written, and it's got this fucking abrasive quality to it. Um, it's just really charming in a couple of ways that kind of make it unique while being kind of normal. This is really, really good. Um, I want to say this was, yeah, mastered at Necromorbus Studios. I'm a really big fan of Necromorbus Studios and uh, the shit they kick out, like early Watane. I think they wound up doing the last uh, Mayhem record too, so. If that uh, tickles your fancy, yeah. Canadian black metal. Let's see, next. What do we got here? Ghoul Gotha. So, if you've been following along uh, with my channel, you probably remember Conjureth, the review I did of their new EP. Um, hope you listened to that, it's fucking great. I believe the end of the contest is coming up this week. Um, so enter if you haven't. Anyways, um, Conjureth was formed by three members who used to play in Ghoul Gotha. <clears throat> One of the members of Ghoul Gotha is a really good friend of mine, Wayne, and we've known each other for 20 years now. Um, this is their debut demo in 2012. Um, this is just a two piece, two song, um, demo kind of getting things off the ground they were a four piece at this time number 35 of 100 um this is really um just kind of like dipping toes in the water for the style that they would quickly progress to over the course of the next couple of years um this is also i believe available on cassette one second i'll just check i think i have it Yeah, also have a cassette version of this. I believe it was released by Unholy Domain. Um, yeah, Wayne sent me both of those uh, a couple of years ago. So it's, that's just kind of like getting started with Ghoul Gotha and being kind of a traditionalist, but starting to work in some new ideas kind of style. But then they released, uh, which one's first here? In a short period of time, they first released uh, the Death Mask Cloak on Dark Descent Records. Can't recommend this or the next one enough. 
um, especially if you've if you're like a new fan of Conjureth and you haven't gone back and listened to Golgotha. There's a ton of style that transferred over from Golgotha into Conjureth. Um, it just for me Conjureth sounds a little bit more refined, a little bit more perfected, and I'm really fucking stoked to see what winds up happening. But Golgotha didn't make it um, for ma very many years because the drummer Charlie Corin went on to play in a ton of different bands. He's just like a fucking career sit-in drummer. He's super talented, plays with Incantation, Ascended Dead, um, you name it. If you need a fucking death metal drummer for hire that fucking rules, Charlie's the guy that you want. Um, but uh, I really, really enjoy the interesting kind of style going on with the uh, Death Mask Cloak. Um, also especially um, noteworthy is the lyrics on uh, this album, both albums really. Um, it just like stepping into Wayne's head, the way he thinks about and creates death metal is, um, it's really kind of an all immersive experience, understanding how he um, kind of projects this dreary, nightmarish kind of melting dread. It's poetic, um, and I think his, his lyrics really is exemplify the way the music winds up um, sounding, and he works with musicians who are able to just work all together as a band to, to really bring that vision forward super well. Super proud of uh, what he's been doing since he moved out there to California, but um, really, really eloquent and poetic lyrics, and then like these little explanations um, beneath each one that also are like super poetic as, as well so I mean honestly both of them could be lyrics anyways so um, I, I don't really have enough experience listening to both of these to say this is how this one is different from this one um, they really aren't all that different from um, what little I've listened to them um, I think I want to say to start of the cross maybe had some more kind of melodic, memorable, catchy, sort of candy moments on it, um, which to me was kind of the natural progression of uh, the band. Um, layout by fellow YouTuber Justin Stubbs here. Killer artwork by my buddy Dave Torculon. Miss you. <laughs> There's kind of fun little drawings along with each one of these songs, which is a cool little touch. Golgotha is just one of those bands that had a lot to offer, and I wish they would have uh, put out more. I wish these would have maybe also been uh, issued by Dark Descent on vinyl. I think that would really lend itself well to um, the bassiness of this band and just how sludgy and guttural their tone can be, especially that Conjureth. If they wind up doing a debut, I really hope uh, they wind up being on vinyl. But uh, in on this one, to start of the cross, uh, they were a three-piece. Uh, I don't know if that really comes through the sound all that much but killer band Golgotha are definitely worth your time um, and they are split up and gone on to do uh, Conjurer. So the next thing I have is two of the same guys from Golgotha playing in this band called Gloomed and this is so dark you might not even be able to see it that well. Maybe this will help. Uh, so um, Quite different from Golgotha, but I don't know, I guess I would say it's if you liked them, you should also check this out. But this is a lot more Sabbathy, riffy, kind of sludgy doom metal. Way more in the style of like a 70s kind of St. Vitus-y kind of thing. Um, the vocals are mostly clean and well done, um, but this is also just like a quick three song EP um, but you know the first song is 10 minutes the second one is seven minutes and the third song is about 15 minutes long so it's kind of a lengthy EP um, but the songs are really well written um, I really thought this was also a promising thing for Wayne to be doing but quickly after Gloomed um, did this he moved on they moved on to uh, working on Conjureth and from the looks of it Conjureth is gonna have a lot of output uh, I think they're just writing songs left and left and right. So hopefully some label picks them up and uh, puts out a ton of stuff by them. So next we've got, this is probably out of order, but whatever. Um, quick little three song EP by some friends of mine from way back in the day. Girls of Comanche. 
Um, this is called Nicholas, Prince of Darkness, Metal Guitar God, News Anchorman, Cult Leader. I don't know. Um, I met these kids at a show that they were playing with us back in 2003 or two, maybe. This is a quick little cute CDR, three inch CDR. I thought these were awesome back then. Just an awesome way to get your shit done all DIY style. Um, this is just kind of like basic Midwest screamo from what I remember. Um, I remember the singer was like absolutely fucking nuts about Mr. Bungle and we talked a lot and kind of bonded over that. Um, three songs. I think the song title D fucking Vorse is a really good song title and Atlas kind of looks like Satan backwards. It's not a bad song title. Disco Ball in the Killing Yard. Yeah, there you go. So we're going to end this with a rundown of the discography of Goat Horn. So in 2005, I want to say, I went to, I think, the third iteration of Chicago... Fuck, was it traditional metal fest or Chicago God I don't I don't I'm totally, totally pulling a fucking blank I went to a couple of these festivals and um, one year I didn't go and then the next year they were done but a lot of killer bands played it traditional metal fest or something I don't know um, I'm not super huge in like the trad the speed the heavy metal kind of shit um, as you should probably well know if you watch my channel um, but I went and I had a, a really great time. Um, and these guys were headlining. Um, this is Goat Horn. And there, I was like so impressed with their live set. Um, bought all their stuff immediately. So this was their debut, Voyage to Nowhere. Uh, they're like a three piece, traditional, kind of heavy speed metal kind of thing. Um, it would probably help a lot of you guys out if I mentioned that the singer, Jason. Decay went on after Goat Horn to play in Cauldron, uh, who are pretty big as far as I understand it. I haven't really listened to Cauldron that much um, to know like what their good stuff is or whatnot. I should probably get on that, but uh, this is the first band that uh, he was in, and they were killer. This one is a lot more like sludgy, stonery, St. Vitus-y kind of thing. This is kind of their sigil, Goat Horn. Um, and this has some really, really catchy riffs on it. You've all seen... I don't need to show you that, um, but it's good. It's something I listened to for a long, long time after I uh, saw them live. They just fucking played such a killer set. They blew us the fuck away. After that, they, let's see, which one came next? Now, that was a 2001. They did this full length, Storming the Gates, uh, and this fucking rules. This is a lot more like power metal, speed metal-y kind of thing than this one, which is stonery and more kind of doomy. Um, but fucking beer swelling riff heads. This is really, really good stuff. Songwriting is just really, really great. It seems like this got really quiet all of a sudden. Crank it back up. Um, almost impossible to read lyrics here. Um, but I remember kind of this having like songs that are nearly as catchy as some of like Blind Guardians kind of stuff. It's got this grandiose kind of style to it. Um, about two years later, 2005, this EP, Threatening Force, came out. And this was kind of a little more down to earth, I think. It was more into the like beer swilling kind of um, naughty kind of speed metal. Like, yeah. Um, couldn't really pick a favorite of all of this stuff. But, um, you know, there's a lot of times where I'll be drinking beer, watch a live set blow a bunch of money on a band's entire discography and then like kind of forget about it because it was more about like the night than it was about the band but uh i listened to all three of these quite a bit for a while after i got all these from the band so killer stuff by all means if you're into cauldron whatsoever um jason decay did a lot of good bass work and uh He's kind of a shitty vocalist in this band, but it's really, really charming and kind of fun the way he does that. And there's a lot of like chorus vocals where the whole band um, kind of helps him out and kind of makes it sound more uh, memorable. Fun stuff, not amazing or anything, but uh, 
yeah, if you're into the traditional kind of heavy speed metal shit, um, I'm not really that crazy about it, but yeah. So that's gonna do it for this from the vault. Um, might be another couple of weeks before we get back into it or so, um, but not stopping anytime soon. Uh, I am still working, so I don't know if the quarantine is going to hit me or not. Um, going to try and ramp up the filming and content for you guys who are uh, stuck around the house, hopefully. Uh, if you didn't catch it, uh, I did a, a live stream panel discussion, which I think is funny to call it, with uh, Marty Worm, Eric Bauer, Ground Zero Salem, Jason Hook, and The Dark Path. Uh, two nights ago and I got really really drunk and yesterday I was completely hungover and worthless it's worth watching it's a uh, six hours long it's not worth it watching for six fucking hours I will tell you that but it's hilarious yeah now it's all fucking loud on me what the fuck man bullshit anyways um, Marty Worms channel I'll uh, link it down below I think we want to start doing this more often if we're going to be sitting around the house, quarantined and whatnot. So uh, if you're another YouTuber and you're interested in joining in, get a hold of me. Maybe we'll figure something out. I want to kind of do this like host it on other people's channels, have other guests and stuff like that. Just kind of mix it up and just kind of shoot the shit and whatever. Um, so we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. 